KK, middle voice man in the streets. I'm in the streets of Manhattan. Actually, I'm in the basement of the Gramercy Theater with Jeff Young from the Kings Ooh. of Thrash. You might remember Jeff was on Megadeth So What? So Far So Good So What album. Yep. Yeah. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Now, first of all, I just yeah. want to thank Cleopatra Records for getting me a copy of this. Before the interview, I've listened to it over 10, 15 times. It's, Ooh, I gotta uh, tell you. Did you watch the DVD? I watched the DVD. Cool. I liked it. I liked what you guys did with the fan stuff. You threw some different stuff in there. I yeah. see. Now, in the beginning, I didn't care for the singer at the first go around. And then the more I listened to him, I got what you were saying about him. He's not a Dave Mustang per se uh, copy, he's his own man, like more of a Chris Cornell if you think. Yeah, man. How can you not like that? It's good. But now, you found them at the Whiskey with the drummer Fred? Uh, yeah, we discovered them at the Ultimate Jam at the Whiskey. David and I were invited to partake in the Big Four themed evening, and they match made us with Chaz, who plays in a Soundgarden tribute and a Megadeth tribute. And we did the show unrehearsed, and it got picked up all over the internet, and people loved it, and here we are. Oh, okay. Fred was playing some Slayer with some other musicians that night, and I happened to see him. He's about the baddest drummer out there right now, in my uh, estimation. Uh, originally, you had Mike Heller, right? Correct. Yeah, he, he was, was just sitting in uh, okay. that show. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Now, uh, Chris Poland, yep. he is on the DVD and the album. Uh, yeah. Is he a member of the band or just a West Coast he's a, member? He's an honorary amigo, but the band is the four of us. It's the four, that's what I want. Four people in the Beatles, four people in Kiss, four dudes in Cheap Trick. Four that's all you need for a good band. Four dudes in yeah. Kings of I Thrash. I think anything more is too much. Very good. Then. Now, uh, Megadeth, you're doing two albums. The first album? Killing is my business. Killing is my business, and you had to relearn all of that? We learned a lot of it because we only did a couple of few songs right. like back in the day. Right. So we went through each measure and each cell and syllable and got every note. And you have some original tapes that you yeah. did. Chris Poland, I saw that. Well, they're, wow. they're, the Killing ones, Chris didn't play uh, any rhythms on that. So I have all Dave Mustaine's rhythms soloed. It means isolated. Or our younger people call them stems. It's just the guitar track by itself. So I have all Mustaine's rhythms, I have all Chris's leads from Killing, and then I have, Chris did play rhythm on EP Cells, I have his rhythm soloed and his solo soloed. And of course, so far so good, so what, I already knew that stuff. So. I had to figure out some of, you know, who's solos, but you know, it's a lot easier than figuring out Chris Poland's solos. Now you have uh, some originals coming out, which is, yeah. this was not only, never going to be a tribute band, or a you're gonna put original music out, correct? Burning yeah. Bridges was our first taste. Bridges burn. Bridges burning. No one can get it right, man. Uh -huh. Blabbermouth calls it Bridges burn. <laughs> it's Bridges burn. This guy burn. got it wrong. Yeah. Bridges so, burn. So you got a couple more coming out? Yeah, we got three more done. There's another one called Bullets Ready that we were writing lyrics yesterday upstairs in the dressing room before the show. All four of us writing the tribute. At different times, Fred and I wrote the course in the kitchen one afternoon when everyone else was gone, and then yesterday, David and Chaz and me were working on a pre-course. So this is really a band in all sense, all senses of the word, and it's the first real band I've ever been in. I never thought I'd actually have this experience in this lifetime because you know my first band experience was being toxic. Definitely not. So, it's so not a group of brothers like we are. Okay, so this is a real band. So you, your we first band, well, you're going other. back to Megadeth. Yeah. We love each other. We never fight. There's no toxicity. Everyone's clean and sober. And who doesn't get along a little bit? Nobody. David Elson, great guy. Now, uh, you say you did this on analog. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a reason? Yeah, I, I... yeah cause digital is corrupt maybe that's why people don't resonate with music the way they used to we're analog creatures we are analog creatures we're not meant to input digital information all these radio frequencies and cell phone things and these 
cookie towers that they're putting up everywhere. 5G. It's very damaging to our spirit and our psyche. And so if there's one thing we can do with the little control we have in this world, we can record our music to analog tape and preserve it the best way we can. Now, I got a couple of questions. Uh, couple of Chris Poland. Uh, in... Uh, Let's say the well. You were in the wilderness those years, in the '90s to 2000s. You were a couple of bands. And got you, Alcatraz. There's rumors. You tried out for Alcatraz, or yeah, I tried out and got the gig, and you got I walked it. away from it. Now, what point of Alcatraz was this? Uh, a few years ago, you'd have to look on my YouTube channel. Oh, okay. It was a few years. Okay. Yeah, it was the, the second coming of Alcatraz. Yeah. The return of Grand Bonnet. Yeah. Okay. They kind of. They went from Grand Bonnet Band. It's right before they ended up getting Joe Stumps. So okay, right okay, that, I got you. On it, they got him. Okay. Now you've had a similar when you passed on. Who'd you pass on? David Lee Roth. Did, did you have an opportunity to play with him? And that was back in the late 80s, right? Jason Becker got the okay. after a pass, which I'm glad because that gave him a chance to do one really killer project before he got sick. And he was a buddy of mine, so I was really. Once I saw his movie, I was really glad I passed on it. Um, I was being managed by Diamond Dave Management, and that's how I got that off. Oh, okay. And uh, you didn't think you were a right me, fit? Huh? Wait, wait, right, not a right fit with Dave? No, I, I turned it down. Oh, that's what I mean, but you didn't think you fit good with him? No, I thought he'd end up in Vegas. Oh. And that was all the way back then, and where'd he end up? In Vegas. Well, there you there go. You go. <laughs> I might have ESP or something. I just don't really like his voice. Honest, and I didn't really want to. And I now, since learning, he's a lunatic. You made a so good choice. I made a good I choice. Made a great choice. It's nuts. Now, well, Kings of Thrash, I just want to ask you a personal question. Like, did you ever think of including, like, Harry King from Slayer and other members of other Thrash bands? I'm referring friends? back to my previous question. The Beatles were four people. Yes, there you go. You know, you don't, you don't, too many cooks spoil the broth. Finding the chemistry in a band is hard. So, you do a lot of guest stars on these tours, right? Yeah, because you... Tonight, we got... Tonight? Steve, Steve. We have our buddy Rick Ventura. Rick Ventura from Riot. From and Riot, Riot Act. Sitting in on the Riot tune on our encore. Sean Drover will be joining us in about a week in Atlanta for our last game of the tour. Chris has joined us. We had a childhood friend of Davis join us near his hometown on this tour. That he was actually in Megadeth when they started. He's the guy who thought of the name Megadeth. Oh, okay. There's a video of us doing the Metallica team okay. jumping the fire online. So that was, he was actually with Dave, and there's pictures of those three together when Megadeth first formed. So yeah, if it's someone relevant and maybe sit in for a, the encore, that's cool. But we're presenting a band concept and the four of us on our instruments, and that's what it's about. And you plan on doing a lot more touring and record, I guess, obviously more than just live yeah, albums. We got we're story. going out of the country next. I'm okay. looking forward to that. Now, um, Lance, we're rounded up with uh, what's your favorite Megadeth song? There's not to be one you wrote. Right? What's your favorite one to play? That's like. I really, I don't really look at music that way. I don't have favorite songs or favorite bands. You just different songs in different moods, and I, every one is fun to play for a different reason. You know, you, there's something in each song. That's why we're doing it because each song is interesting. The fans love hearing it, so every song is our favorite song. The minute we're playing, it, or the four or five minutes we're playing. It. And you guys look like you're really having a lot of fun up there. That's what happens when you get along with your band. Yeah, well, I want to thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Man. And uh, have a great show. And you're watching The Metal Voice.